Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're doing something we don't do very often because a lot of you don't seem to watch these used car videos, so I normally don't do these, but this is what was available here at Morgan Buick GMC today. So for my buddy Wesley, you need to ask for Wesley Swayze. If you come into the dealership, if you have an interest in buying this 2019 Infiniti Q50S, this is the Red Sport 400 the three liter turbocharged engine under the hood. And there's a bit of a surprise there. If you didn't see my preview video earlier in the day on this model, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but you will if you keep watching. So let's take a look at exactly what we have here. And yes, the Red Sport is really the model of the vehicle, the trim level. That doesn't mean it's going to be red. This is Iridium Blue is the color of the vehicle and actually a very nice looking color. It has a good stance to it. As you can see, it competes with the, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, the BMW 300 Series, and so forth, and has a really nice look. I like the effect of the headlights here. A pretty nice racy look, and after all, it should, considering what's under the hood. You're gonna have the turn signals located down there, the daytime running lights up here, and also, the fog lights on the lower portion of the bumper down there. And that classic Infinity logo right there in the center of the upper grill. So one of the thing, things about this car that would really set it apart if you're looking for maybe the ultimate sleeper, well, this is it. Kind of raised to the second power. What exactly do I mean by that? Under the hood is the three liter turbocharged six cylinder. It makes 400 horsepower and the torque numbers come in at 350. It's mated to a seven speed automatic transmission. And if you have rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, well, it's gonna get down the road very quickly. All wheel drive is supposed to do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. That is impressive. What about MPGs? 19 miles per gallon city, 26 out on the highway, 20 gallon fuel tank. Here's something interesting. I don't normally share this in my videos. Maybe I should share it more often. I saw it today in my research. So here's something that you'll want to know. With that 20 gallon fuel tank, if you're good, even with all this horsepower under the hood, it should, when it's completely stock, get 380 miles per gallon or 380 miles on one tank, I should say city, 520 out on the highway. But as we take a quick look at the side view mirrors, just to show you that the turn signal indicators are built in. I really like the way that they start somewhat small and come up and get bigger as they come back here. It almost looks like a set of teeth right there to me. I don't know, just what I'm thinking. But I wanna show you something very interesting here. 400 horsepower under the hood, right? Well, not in this case, because of everything that is in these boxes back here in the trunk, these are original parts that have been replaced. It has a lot of aftermarket parts and pieces under the hood, so it's actually making more than 400 horsepower. This could be an interesting test drive. What about cargo capacity? Well, you're looking at from 13.2 up to 13.5. And I'm gonna pull on this release right here. You can see the diagram right there of what it is, or the image pretty obvious what I just did, but obviously you can lower the seat backs by pulling on that release. I'll only do it on one side, but that's how you're going to maximize your cargo space quite a bit here. And a great looking interior. I like the design of what you have here on the door panel. Now you'll notice there is no door bin right here. Not necessarily the end of the world for you who will probably be the driver. I doubt passengers are watching this video right now, but who knows they might be. But we'll just take a quick look at what is here on the interior. A nice look with the way the stitching runs and just the overall design of the seats themselves. There's a lot of nice contrast stitching throughout. And then we'll pull down the armrest right here, the armrest slash concealed away cup holders. And let's see, there we go. We'll show you where those cup holders are. And one thing beyond what we saw earlier, I will show you you also have a pass-through right here if you want to use that for 
whatever needs to fit through there if there's nobody sitting here in this area. And yes, it is for three passengers because sometimes people will tell me it's not when it is. That's just the way the YouTube correction Nazi community works. But as you can see, one, two, three seat belts here. So that's not a big deal. But personally, I must say, at five foot ten, yeah, my head's kind of right against the roof. But like I said, you're the driver. It's not going to matter too much. But if you're my height, you probably are going to want to sit in the front seat. Obviously, that seat is ridiculously far back. So yeah, there's more leg room than what that represents. But the most important part, I would say, is what you'll find in the front seat. Let's hop up there and take a look. And before we do, yes, you do have a sunroof, just a conventional size, but just so you know what's there. And from this angle, you can tell that this Q50S definitely has, well, somewhat of a racy looking stance, as it should. Wondering what the remote looks like? Well, there it is. And a lot of you, it's your favorite feature right up here at the top. It's going to be the remote start. Everything else there that you would likely expect to see. Well, let's take a look into the interior through the passenger side door. If you're looking for the door bin, well, you better call shotgun because that's where you're going to find these door bins on the front doors. But a very nice look overall. Take a quick look in here into the driver's compartment through the passenger side. Power seats for the driver and the passenger. Comfortable, by the way, I must admit. A little bit of bolstering there, as you can see. And in case you're wondering, well, how much can I stash inside that glove box right there well it's pretty deep down in there as you can see and then we'll take a quick look here into the center console as you can see you're going to find your connectivity right there a few different options on that probably don't have to tell you what those are you already know because you see them and a little bit of space in there kind of a felt lined interior of the console feels kind of nice we can almost do an asmr video Okay, I have to admit that ASMR impression probably sounded a little bit creepy, so maybe I should brush up on my ASMR skills. Tell me what you think down in the comments. Did you laugh? Did you get scared? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I better not do that. I don't want you clicking off at this point of the video. Anyway, what do we have here on the driver's side? Well, pretty much the same thing we saw on the passenger side for the most part. Here's your controls for the side view mirrors, those power side view mirrors, and you also have seat memory right here. That's always a good thing. And as you can see right here, tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. The good news about that is that it is power. That's always a win for anybody. We'll hit the push button start, let everything come to life here. A little bit hard to get completely out of the sunlight today. It just is what it is, but you can see what's there. And I do like the fact that you have these nice large shifter paddles. So with the multiple driving modes, obviously you can take advantage of those in Sport and Sport Plus. I'll show you what the driving modes are shortly. And also the previous owner, being that this is a used model, here's something really cool. The previous owner, they splurged a little bit and added the blinker option. That's why this lever's right here. It's not only for controlling the headlights and the functionality of the headlights, and the fog lights that I showed you on the bumper, but you can also use your blinkers with this lever. It's not that hard, I promise it won't give you a heart attack. You won't need oxygen after you use it. Same thing over here with the controls for the windshield wipers. I can't say anything sarcastic about that because when it's raining, people use their windshield wipers. Too bad they don't do that when they're turning and changing lanes in their cars the same way they do with these windshield wipers. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's okay to laugh. Might as well be a little sarcastic. Now check this out. I really like what we have here with the built-in navigation because you can do a whole lot here. You can use your fingers to do that. There is a dial down here, a selector that you can also use. I'll show you how that works. You can kind of see the same thing. Pretty simple, pretty easy to figure out. A lot of great options here, a lot of good technology. I must admit, depending on what you want to know about, it's all here. Dual zone climate control, everything located on the side of the lower touch screen, as you can see right there. Easy to use, easy to figure out. You're going to see that when you hit the buttons right there on that upper screen is where the adjustments will show so you know what the temperature is when you're changing the temperature. All that good stuff there. And then obviously I don't have to say a whole lot about what is here. I don't think with what we have within the infotainment screen there is a lot you can adjust here. As you can see, 
easy to use, easy to figure out. You can pair your phone, information is there. You can go with in-depth services if you want to know what you need to do with your vehicle. It's, it's so easy, but I do like that. Let's check this out right here just for the fun of it. Um, service unavailable, so we won't be able to show you that. I was wrong about that, wasn't I? But that's okay, it automatically comes back to this screen. Enough of that, I think you've got it. And then controls for your radio down here, again, easy to figure out. But one thing I found that's very interesting is a lot of people really like to have these knobs right here. They don't wanna to have to go into the infotainment screens to control things. That's something that car makers need to pay attention to for the future because some are going away with that or going away from it and some already have. And here is your shifter. For those of you who are not fans of the push button shifters, well, guess what? You don't have to worry about that here. And then let me do one thing here. Let's go here. I'm gonna go into reverse and show you the camera views right there. You can see you've got your 360 degree view right there. And then you also have multiple views depending on what you want to see. We'll just take a look at what is available all around the vehicle and you can see everything changing there based on what I'm doing. If you want to see that, let's go back into, we're gonna go home real quick and just so I can show you, this is so easy to do down here. There is a button right here. Well, it's kind of obvious that it's for the cameras. It says cameras on there, but you can push that and do the same thing. And there you go. You don't have to be in reverse. That's a good thing. Obviously, your shifter right there. And then you can make a lot of changes, go through a lot of information here with the dial selector as well. You can bring your map back up if you need to by pushing that button. You can go back. And here is the selector for your multiple driving modes. What exactly are those driving modes? Well, as you can see, depending on where you live, well, you might need snow. You can drive in snail mode with eco, standard, sport. And I like how the graphics change. As you change the driving mode, you can go into personal. That way you personalize exactly what's there. That's what we're gonna be driving in on our test drive. And speaking of that, that's exactly what it's time for. What a segue into the test drive. All right, guys, here we go. The part that I think is the most important, and I'm just driving in normal mode here, so I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go into snail mode just for the heck of it, and uh, let's see, there we go. Now I'm in eco mode. Let's just see how it reacts in eco mode. I think it's kind of confused because it's thinking, wait a minute, I've got all this horsepower and well, you're putting me in the wrong mode. So at least we kind of know that, but I'll tell you what, there's probably some things that are changed here because of all of the aftermarket parts that are here on the engine. And if I can get you a list of what that is, I will. But like I said, you can just talk to Dalton that's over here in the passenger seat. Wesley's here with me. I've mentioned him earlier in the video. Do you own a 1987 Mercedes Benz by any chance? No, I was just gonna see if he had the same car as Dalton did. It was destroyed in the movie, by the way. That kind of stinks, but it is what it is. But overall, let's just talk practical driving here, not driving spiritedly. But practical driving, it's a really enjoyable car to drive. From the front seat perspective, it's nice and comfortable. I'm happy. I'm a little bit closer to the steering wheel than a lot of people might want to be. I think that's my drag racing background. Yes, I do race as a hobby. And so I'm used to having the steering wheel a lot closer and I think that's why I do that. The seats themselves, nice and comfortable. I must say, everything seems to have been very well taken care of. And I realize for those of you who may be looking for one of these models somewhere else outside of Northwest Louisiana, well, this might not necessarily help you, but at least you know that there can be something like this out there that is well taken care of this one drives well, the transmission seems to behave well, you know, just because it's been kind of hopped up, it looks like, or sounds like, and actually drives like too, doesn't mean that the previous owner didn't really take care of it. So overall, I'm pretty impressed here. Now we're gonna change modes here and get down the road. I've been driving, I did an eco, I tried eco, and you know, snail mode, as I like to call it, isn't quite the same here because of the changes that have been made to the engine, but, Standard mode, well, good. You're gonna get down the road just fine. But here's something interesting. With two of us in the car, let's try a zero to 60 test with the Draggy and see what we come up with. All right, guys, here we go, zero to 60.
What did we come up with? Did it tell you? We might have to put it on the screen. Look, I'll get it later on the screen, but I'm gonna tell you what, it, it spun the tires. This is the rear wheel drive version, by the way. In case you're wondering, this is not all wheel drive. I tell you what, if, if I owned this car, we'd get a good burnout thumbnail because this thing obviously has no problem spinning the tires, but wow. I must say, I'm really impressed. And that was in Sport Plus mode, so I don't think the zero to 60 was all that impressive. There's two of us in the car. The zero to 60 is going to be its best at with all wheel drive and it's supposed to be four and a half seconds, 4.5 seconds. I guarantee you we did not get that in this case, but this is a sleeper for sure. Even if it wasn't modded out, even if it didn't have whatever horsepower it's making, it would still get down the road no problem. And keep in mind, those zero to 60 numbers, whether it's the 5.5 to 5.7 or the 4.5, that's with stock horsepower depending on what you have under the hood. So I must say, very impressed. So, wow. You know, this kind of goes back to what I've said in previous videos. I am building a new rear engine dragster. We're going to race in the top dragster class. If I wasn't doing that, this might become my daily driver. So tell me down in the comments section, what do you think? Should you buy a used Infiniti Q50S Red Sport 400? I must say, it's been a lot of fun to drive this model. I think it would be fun to drive without all of the mods that are on here definitely making a little bit more than stock horsepower that is for sure so i got to say a special thanks to my friend wesley the dealership cooler or dalton at the dealership as i sometimes like to call him for giving me the opportunity to show you this infinity today and of course i appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and giving me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out another of the videos that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.